some days. You just on form. You take Sonic to level six. You crack every game. You make all the right moves. How do you do that? Some days. Just glad they invented this. All you're good for is watching telly. How they do that? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Replay Retro, your recommended dose of retro gaming review and reflection. I'm Matt, and on this week's show we take a look at a system accessory facing oblivion. A device for whom technology has moved on, leaving it without a purpose. The accessory I'm talking about is of course the TV tuner add-on for the Sega Game Gear. Way back near the beginning of Season 2 we looked at how Sega sought to make their own handheld as a challenge to the dominant Nintendo Game Boy and you can take a look at that episode now by clicking the channel dial to the right of your screen. In that review we saw how Sega, much like Atari with their Lynx console, decided to focus on superior technology to defeat Nintendo instead of cheaper, less well equipped systems like the Supervision from Watara. And in keeping with that concept they wanted to keep their Game Gear system one step ahead of the competition. To do so they launched the TV tuner in 1991, just a year after the main console. A move which would be repeated by NEC with their PC Engine GT and TurboVision adapter. This bold move saw handheld gaming look more cost effective in a world where handheld televisions were becoming popular but expensive adult desirables and this undoubtedly helped to propel the Game Gear's sales, especially when special bundles were released offering the customer a saving on the console and tuner when bought together as one package. However, as we know, one of the system's key problems was its poor battery life, and powering a whacking great TV tuner certainly didn't help this issue. Yet the console's good quality speaker, foldable stand and backlit screen still helped ensure the TV tuner would become a very successful accessory, wanted by all. And the later release of the Super Wide Gear screen magnifier allowed users to enlarge the screen to a more comfortable size, a feature not seen on most common handheld TV sets. Sadly, unlike most interesting retro accessories, the future will not be quite so kind to Game Gear's TV tuner, and pretty soon there'll be no signals left for it to pick up. Yes, that's right, the adapter is of course an analogue device, and as such is a victim of the digital switchover, which is now in full swing as the final analogue transmitters go offline, not just in this country, but across most of the world over the next few years. To make way, of course, for vastly improved digital broadcasting. At the time of writing this script, I haven't yet seen any proper mods upgrading the adapter to digital, but of course that's not to say it wouldn't be possible somehow, so perhaps somewhere out there, there is a glimmer of hope for this pioneering gadget. But before these signals are gone for good, let's now take a look at the tuner in more detail, and of course we'll also see it in action while we still can. Okay, so here we are with the Game Gear TV tuner itself, obviously the Game Gear console, and as you can see from the box, this was a, a pack-in version where you got both the console, the TV tuner, and a game which was Columns, the standard pack-in game, all together in one bundle, which is pretty good really, you've got the Sega Pirate TV advertising logo there, we've got around the back, nothing particularly special on the back really. Shows you what other accessories available, uh, including car adapters, the AV cable so that you can plug external sources into this, battery pack, um, AC adapter, and gear to gear cable. So, looking at the device itself, you can see it's quite small. The bottom of it here, very obviously, is just like a standard cartridge so that you can plug it in to the game gear. On the front here, if you can make that out, you have your tuning dials. You can see all the where you're currently tuned into on the UHF, ultra high frequency, or the VHF, is that very high frequency, uh, bands there. Obviously over here we tend to use the UHF more than the VHF in this country. Logo, so you've got Sega, Game Gear, TV Tuner, and Colour. With that obviously being quite a big selling point, this is a colour device. 
On the side, you have a little wheel for controlling uh, the colour itself. So I think that's like your equivalent of like your gamma and things like that. It just helps tweak it to get it just right if it started to slip. You have your external uh, aerial socket. So that's for plugging in an another aerial. Um, for example, you know, you, if you can get a cable to fit that, you could use your house aerial, whatever, just to really boost up the signal capability. On the other side, you have another similar socket. That one is for an external input, so that you can basically uh, run other devices off this. Uh, you could plug in your video camera, for example, to use the Game Gear screen as a portable screen for your video camera. Or you could even plug in another console. So if you really wanted to, you could run, you know, using various cables and adapters, you could plug an Xbox 360 into there or a PS3. And you could actually use your PS3 on the Game Gear screen. I'm sure it would be very difficult because it would be small, but it would be doable. So if you could find a way to power your PS3 in the car, Game Gear's screen means you could play on the go. Maybe or maybe not. Also on the top, you have the aerial, which extends a fair old way. This is going to be difficult to fit in. Shot, okay. I'll put it against my arm, it's still, still too long. That is a massive, massive aerial. Uh, but in fairness, I find when it's fully extended, you do get some pretty good signal, especially when you're outdoors. So I can see why they wanted to give it that. Obviously, you don't have to have it all the way up. You can pick your own height depending on what you need. It'll go side to side, round and round. So it's fully adjustable. Good aerial. And unlike a lot of aerials on pull up, push down things, I find this is more solid. It's not going to fall apart so easily. You're not going to end up with bits of the aerial scattered everywhere. So clearly, unlike most of them, this has been designed to go up and down on a regular basis. You also have, of course, the UHF VHF switch. As you can see, mine is set to UHF because, as I just said earlier, that's what we use in this country. On the back, you find your serial number. Another screw for tightening the aerial's internal connection. All your little information and a push clip to release it from the Game Gear. To attach it to your Game Gear, you simply slide it into the cartridge slot and push down. And it will sit there nice and snugly. The metal stand, if I had one of those, then clips into the back here and the console will stand quite happily by itself, but I don't have that. So once this is in, and you've of course got your six batteries in there, or your battery pack, or you're running it off the mains, you're ready to switch it on and start watching some TV on your Game Gear. So, just adjusting the volume a bit. There we go. You can then toy with the brightness. Get it where you want it. And then it's simply a case of rolling that tuning wheel until you find a There we go. What's that? We're um, having a barbecue tomorrow. We invited some friends. Um, it's not really coming across very well on the camera, but that picture is very clear. I believe that is the Channel 4 Spectacular Hollyoaks. See if lowering the brightness helps. Drill? Are you um, focus doesn't look like a hat? No. That looks great. As you can tell, the sound quality is fantastic. It is. It's just a pity this camera can't really show the picture. I like subtitle woman in the bottom here. If I'd known who he was, I never would have unmuted him. I wonder if I'm allowed to show this. I was drunk yet, and I've seen Bart all over you. She saw Bart all over. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Just sorry, were you disappointed by some of the things he was saying about the earlier strikes and demonstrations? Oh, without a shadow of Another power. clear picture there. Fundamental error by attacking the strikes on the 30th of June. And, uh, well, you know, he's laying in his job. He's got to be given time to construct his hopefully radical alternative. Yeah. And I hope that... Take and here, of course, Moore. is what this device Just excelled in. the big winner in that situation. A football match. I can remember when I when I was in school uh, and there was the World Cup or the European Trisman. Cup, whatever was on, people would have portable little TVs uh, for breaks so that they could watch the matches. And I was always really, really jealous. And the Game Gear represented a great way to get into that because handheld TVs were very expensive. But with the Game Gear, you could justify it because you were getting a handheld video game and your TV system. As long as you bought the adapter. And looking at the cost of my 
uh, the pack that this came in originally, which I think is about £129 for the console, the tuner and one game. I think that's about the same price as you could get a portable TV for on its own anyway. So a great device. Friesland. Found Shane Williams just about the same time that Jacques Ferrie did. And as like I've already said, the sound quality is fantastic. It wasn't the tackle of Ferrie that ups suggests that it will grow, but perhaps pretty, at a slower pretty, rate. Pretty flat though, really. Yes, I mean your point though that more political debate. Can we do these changes and then make work pay get Not as good a signal there? Some passages of play now, looking a lot easier, getting a bit of Not confidence. Are you still updating? Did you do this pretty weird thing with his tongue? And it looks like that is about all we're going to find. It's sad to think, really, that when the digital switchover comes, this device will be completely obsolete. It'll be joining that list of a very small few gaming accessories which become useless. Um, you know, for example, the Dreamcast and, and GameCube's modems, they're pretty much useless now because their services associated with them are gone. It's just sad, really, that these devices are slowly becoming useless. Vince Cable on. Wow, that looks like an exciting toy. So there you go. That is the Sega Game Gear TV tuner for use with the Game Gear, allowing you to watch colour TV analog images on your Game Gear portable video game system. A few years after the launch of the TV tuner, Sega found themselves in dispute with its manufacturer, possibly around the proposed production of a self-tuning model. And as a result of this, a rumour exists which states that in order to stop this third party from making profit without Sega, future runs of the Game Gear were modified so that they wouldn't have the ability to use the TV tuner. Information on this goes on to state that units whose serial numbers start with a letter are totally incompatible. However, both of my consoles have just such serial numbers, and as you've just seen, both of them work fine with the TV tuner. Of course, if anyone can shed any further light on this, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the show via the comments or our Twitter page. The Majesco reproduction consoles, which were launched in 2001 to relaunch the console, are, however, known to be completely incompatible with the TV tuner simply as a cost-cutting measure by Majesco, as well as the company's lack of interest in reproducing the actual tuner accessory for what it knew would be a small audience. While the TV signals for this tuner may be vanishing, it's well worth remembering that the adapter can take a signal from an external source, and so could be used as a screen for other devices, such as cameras and other games consoles. So perhaps if you can find a power adapter, you could play your Dreamcast in the car and really live the Sega dream. That's all for today's show, but be sure to join me again next week for more retro gaming. And don't forget that in the meantime you can keep in touch with the show via our Twitter page. See you next week on Replay Retro. Okay, so something quite cool I've just found out, I've just been told anyway, is that apparently another way to connect systems to the Game Gear's TV tuner without using excess cable, so without having to go out and buy another cable, is simply to hold their RF lead against the aerial and tune it in, and apparently that will work. So down here I've got my master system set up because it's been set up uh, to play... Yep. Uh, for the... Mission is possible weekend at GameLink. I'm going to turn that on now. Okay, so that's running. And I'm going to switch on the Game Gear TV tuner. There we go. So that's now running. Then I'm going to take the RF cable that's coming out of the back. That's the RF cable that's coming out of the back of the master system. 
and I'm going to hold that against the aerial there okay and then I'm going to try and tune that in oh oh I don't know if you can see that. I'm hoping you can hear it, even if you can't see it. But that is it. That is there. Back to the Future Part 2. So it is possible to do it that way. Although, I'm not sure how easily I could get the controller and play the game. No. Oh. Maybe. Ah.